Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Quaddy Potty. Cashy joined by Nick. How are you, mate? Doing well, mate. Doing well. Um, hope everyone's good at home listening. Um, getting this one out pretty late, 10.15. On a Wednesday night, I fly to Melbourne tomorrow for the for the Swannies Grand Final and also get down to Mooney Valley as well. So, um, yeah, it'll be a bit of a quick turnaround, but, um, yeah, looking forward to the weekend. Yeah, always a good weekend. You've gone, what, three years in a row now? Yeah, this will be the third in a row. Went in 2022 was the first year. Um, Swans didn't do too well, but... um. Yeah, looking forward to this one. A bit, bit different. Uh, probably going up with a bit more, bit more confidence, but also know what can happen on the day. So we'll wait and see. But um, yeah, can't get too ahead of myself. Plus, it's a, it's a big night on Friday night as well over at Mooney Valley, which will be awesome. Manicado Stakes looks pretty good. I think honestly, the best Friday night card they've put together in the last. Well, I mean, since you've been going, yeah. like you've 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 had some good nights, but. This is by far and away the best of the last three nights. I, 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 don't, put together. I don't disagree with you there. That's for sure. Like, geez, Mr. Brightside versus Pride of Jenny. Um, you know, the Manicato Stakes is stacked. Uh, I think we'll, we'll talk about it all a bit more later. We might not have many tips to go around because you're probably going to be providing them all, you know, Friday night live from the track or at least once you get down to Melbourne. But we'll definitely discuss the races that have been produced without maybe giving many tips. But... Let's talk about last week quickly. Jeez, seven winners. It's every second week we seem to come out and just blitz it. Albeit they were many, many favorites, so no prizes for the uh, the prices, but winners are winners. They were your winners as well. I didn't have a very, very great day. So um, Six out of ten for cash. Here six on the out of card. ten. Can't complain for cash. But, um, yeah, look, we're, we're, we're going to come back again this week. We've got a lot of racing coming back, and I do like this one. There's a bit of value there, what I like. Um, but yeah, well done to you, mate. You definitely saved saved the day. But the quarter we tipped it, but you <laughs> lost money on it. So, so yeah, a lot um, a lot of people were in the messages because a lot of people don't quite understand how quarties work. It's essentially like on the weekend. What happened? It's essentially like winning the lottery, but everyone won it, so you only get ten bucks. Like the you know, it's they say that you know the more roughies that get up, the bigger it's going to pay because it's like a multi. It's not like a multi, but that's still the case because. Again, it's like you go into a raffle draw, you go into the lottery draw, and the more people that, you know, get knocked out every leg because they didn't pick those roughies, you know, they get out of the draw. So you get more and more, and the, the prize prize pool stays the same, but your chances get higher and higher to get a bigger payout because there's less people that are getting taken out of that raffle, if that's the best way to sum it up in a bit of word jumble there. But essentially... Essentially, there's a prize pool with X amount of money with the amount of money that everyone puts in. And then if it's easy to pick like it was on the weekend, it was all pretty much favorites or low priced, more people win, less percentage of the prize pool, less money. Yeah. So literally what happened on the weekend, essentially, you know, everyone won the raffle. No one got knocked out. So it paid nothing. And so it paid literally less than a $50 stake. So you would have lost money if you put $50 on what we tipped, which is rare. Hopefully we bounce back. We can still say that we've tipped three out of the five quarters, but we want a big payout. We've had some big payouts this spring and we want the bigger payouts um, coming on later and on the spring. Um, on Saturday, God, I was meant to be there, punters, and I would have walked out of that place absolutely steaming with that much money in my pocket. Like I said, six out of ten on the card. Wouldn't have bet in the highway, So, but those other five winners I had, I would have been all over them, especially Elias fangirl, I am me. Those bookies would have been crying by the time I left out. But when I got in my car ready to head to the races, ready to head to the bus stop, my car wouldn't start, it broken down. Instead, I spent, you know, the NR- the afternoon waiting for the NRMA. I got told that I was going to have to spend 150 bucks at the mechanics. And I thought, okay, this sucks, but I'll still get on our quaddy. So instead of coming out 400 days rich, $400 richer, I left $50 poorer on a winning fucking quaddy. How does that work, Nick? Yeah, it sucks, mate. But um, I was well, shattered. It is what it is. On other news, as you can see, if you're watching on video, we're slowly building up the wall. Um, yeah, we've got a couple some... additions. I'll try and move that quickly so you yeah, can I'll, see. I'll move as well. We've got a Ricky Ponning um, memorabilia, and then we've got a Tiger Woods, and then we've got a couple more that's coming through. I know we've got a very elegant kind of thing coming through. Um, but yeah. There's a, there's a couple of different ones. That, that mock wall is definitely, you know, it's going to get built. I reckon it's going to be completely surrounded 
We're going to have that smack bang in the middle, and I, I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to surround it. Well, as it eventually, eventually we might even um, we might even just put um, bring the flag down, and it'll go on the table somewhere, maybe. Yeah, perhaps. And yeah. Then. So we'll wait and see. So if you're watching on the video, but um, you can move your mic back now, mate, and make it symmetrical, kind of. Yeah. Um, so. Exciting times for the mock set, but uh, you know, let's not stuff around. Uh, let's get into it a bit. Um, trials yesterday. We'll quickly touch on those two-year-old trials. We've been the last couple of years. Well, I mean, you came for the first time last year. I've been the last couple of years. Um, first year found uh, Manal was probably the biggest one at forty yet. forty dollars on this uh, on Saturday. This meet last year or it might have been That's, last week actually because so yeah, it was a week behind that's the epsom, epsom days where they run um so the la last couple of years we've absolutely done no i tipped it at 45 dollars and it ran when i was at grand final day last year i remember yeah because epsom day was on grand final day last oh, year okay. they shifted it around this year uh you are right in saying that yes this week last year that's what i meant yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so epsom day. Yeah, oh, so well, like the last couple of years, we've been really, really good with these two-year-old races, especially last year. We absolutely dominated. I think we had like four out of the first two-year-old races of the spring. Year before that, we got both the Jim Crack and the Breeders' Plate. Year before that, we got both the Jim Crack and the Breeders' Plate. Uh, and last year, we got the Jim Crack. Didn't get the Breeders, though. Um, but then we again, like we said, the next four, bang, 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 all they came on. Um, the first year I went in person, was able to find my boy Osmosis, Last year, you found Manal, and then this year, I ventured out there again uh, to see if we could find one. Personally, I don't. I didn't find any that made me go straight away. Oh, yeah, that's my horse. That's what I'm putting my money yeah, on. Yeah, I definitely. I didn't. I didn't get down there this year, unfortunately. Um, but in the end, um, I did went, go through and watch them. And and last year, there was just like you could see. I I, I spotted Manal probably where some people probably didn't. Where I was pretty happy with that, but. This year is kind of just not the same. Looks kind of mid. There was a couple of good ones. I think that I spoke to you about it. That um that gay waterhouse, real expensive colt. I think it was one point two million. The first trial of the day. One point five five mil. One point five five. What what's it called? Tuscany. Tuscany ran really well. Surprising not to see a gay waterhouse two year old lead in a trial. Um and yeah, ran from behind and and, and took the win. I know it's only at the eight, 850, but Obviously, a high price is not really breaking too many stats here by saying that, but um, that's probably one of the top picks that I thought it it, it looked it looked well. It, it's it's a different trend from Gay Waterhouse, which makes me think that they've they've changed the tactic to suit what this horse likes the best, which I think is always a good sign. Um, because Gay Waterhouse obviously she had so much success with two year olds leading Storm Boy for one, um, Manal, most of her two year olds, Camelot, all of them, all of them lead. So for her to change her what she does best and and let a horse run from behind and win, I think it's it's a good sign for the two year old. Um, but yeah, not not really much that really struck out to me, mate. I know you've got a, a, a bit more notes where you can yeah. you can dive into it a little bit. Look, I've got my Bible that I put together every year, um, the book that they hand out, and I just go through and jot down notes where I can. But fair warning, punters, like we've literally just said, there were no cool and gadgets, there were no osmosis, there was no manals where. Either of us, he watched them on the replays. I watched them in person. There was at no point where I went, oh, yeah, that's the horse I'm putting my money on. So they were all very evenly split. There was also less horses that went around. Last year, there were 11 heats. There were only eight um, this year. So take everything with a grain of salt. Like I, I still don't know where my money's going for the breeders of the gym crack. I've got some idea. And there's a couple standouts that you know are going to be starting favorites. But like I said, I didn't walk away from it this year, and this is the first time that I haven't walked away with it and knew exactly where my money was going. Um, heat one was that Tuscany one. Uh, I mean, again, we're not breaking news here with a $1.5 million cult that he literally, you know, paraded like he'd been there on race day before and ran like it. Super classy. Uh, he literally couldn't have been better. Other thing to note is Gambler, um, really good run. If you hadn't been there in person to watch the yard, you wouldn't know otherwise that this horse did not want it. Threw Tommy Berry off immediately when he tried to get on him. Knocked down the trainer. Knocked down the walker as well. Tommy was looked very annoyed. I don't think he really wanted to get back on, but did. Tried to throw him off again. 
And on the third attempt, they got on him and they calmed him down. And when he got out on the track, he actually ran quite well. He nice, big, strong gate out. Um, you know, what was that one? Sorry, Gambler, oh, okay. the number three Gambler in the uh, the green and gold silks. There, same silks as your fearless and your bodyguards out of James Harron. He came third, gassed out in the end. But like some people might see that and go, "Ooh, really good horse." Yeah, considering if it calms down a little bit, it might it might get that at that next step. But, yeah, um, that's the only honourable mention coming out of that. Obviously, Tuscany, the one to follow. But Gambler, if he somehow gets calmed down, maybe someone to follow in the long term. Don't know if he's going to be there on Breeders' Plate Day because of his uh, temperament in the yard. Uh, next one, Heat 2 with the Phillies. Um, this one is what I mentioned. See, York was my girl to really take out of it, and I'll touch more on her later. Manal vibes all over, literally a carbon copy. Um, same silks, same parents. Uh, same demeanor as in the fact that she's a little bit smaller than them, but like was super professional in the way she ran, tucked in, swung wide. Last year, Manal went down the fence. This time, it went down the outside and didn't win the trial, but still was the only sort of girl on the day where I went, that's one that I know that's not going to start favorite and that's potentially going to be a bet for me if she's there at Jim Cracker today, just because of how professional she was about it. Memo, the winner as well, uh, probably one to take out, swung wide, really revved up to get down, but was ridden out quite hard. And then Autumn Blonde, honourable mention. Autumn Suns, it's dad. That's Autumn Glow's dad. That's Autumn. A, a, a lot of, you know, horses that are looking at a mile plus. So really weird to see this horse potentially go to 1,000 metres. So potentially look for that maybe come Autumn, no pun intended, because uh, really, really impressive. But the breeding suggests she's going to want longer eventually. Um, <laughs> uh, number th- Heat number three for the Colts. Uh, I've just written down a line, massive cock, because it was one of the ones that got it out and just started swinging it everywhere. There were a few on the day. Um, Glad to see you noticed that, mate. Yeah. Jeez. I will say, see you off, by the way, massive crip walk on a massive crip walk, <laughs> just real strutted around the yard up on her toes, wrote that down as well. Um, literally the only horse that I liked out of this one was King Kirk, the winner, uh, because, you know, it was nice to see that it missed the jump and didn't get to lead, but was able to tuck behind, then cross heels and actually rise over the top of them in the end. Impressive enough. Um, massive overreaction, though, by the My Race Horse camp. This is My Race Horse, the micro share platform. They closed being able to buy shares in him after the trial and said that they had to reevaluate how much they were going to charge because they literally tweeted, This is massive in all caps. It won a trial. Fucking relax. Um, <laughs> So you'd be spewing if you didn't already get on it because they're going to hike the price up. Uh, Valedictorian as well, $1.3 million, um, Just got way too far back and then closed off well enough, but I don't think it'll be figuring in a breeder's plate again. Maybe one to look forward to down the line. Hit four with the Phillies. Uh, Strata Verena was the winner there. J-Mac rode, rode for Bjorn Baker. That doesn't happen very often, so he must have liked it, and it was pretty impressive. Again, tucked in. Crossed heels. You really like to look for a horse that's able to find a gap and cross heels here because it shows that they're smartly educated and they're not just getting revved up to ride out to the finish. If they're actually running it like it's a race, it's a pretty um, you know, good sign to go about things. I actually liked really uh, voting right, so in the Giga Kick Silks. Uh, again, another one that didn't win, so you might get a price for her. A bit small, still needs to grow, but looked really, really quick when she got going. But again, just needs to grow and go on. Um, race five. Uh, I liked Ripley and Tempestuous out of this. Again, two ones that didn't win but just screamed class and I think are going to be ones to follow, especially Ripley, uh, too darn hot horse, same family as uh, Broadsiding. So, again, I think maybe, you know, breeding suggests it gets up to a mile like a Broadsiding does but you still got to wait and see. Um, those two definitely ones that I could entertain in a breeder's plate if they go and if they're at a nice price because I think – they're the sort of ones that are going to get better with every single run instead of being a real early type, maybe a golden gift horse later on in the spring. Uh, we had to race six, and there wasn't really much to love out of this one apart from the winner, uh, Olay. Big ass, I said in the, the notes. Also, Osmosis, owners own this horse. Uh, I met one of them. I forget your name. I'm sorry, mate. Shout out to you for coming up and introducing yourself. I really appreciated that. Uh, really good. Won the trial without much... Um, you know, challenging it, but it did have to get whipped. So you usually like to look for the horses that don't need to get whipped to do so in these sort of trials. We'll say, though, that Fair Way to Heaven and Bell Mercy uh, were really smart late. Again, probably could potentially look at them in a gym crack at a price or look for a golden gift or maybe those early, early autumn races. Uh, race seven, 
was your North England. Okay, that was your the horse that's most likely going to start favourite in a Breeders' Plate, uh, but was really ridden out with purpose, probably to get fit for the Breeders' Plate because it's looking like they really want to get it up to win it. I probably won't be betting on it because it's probably going to start $263. Uh, but really impressive in the way that obviously it got ridden out, but in these sort of trials, I really like to look for the horses that respond to a bit of pressure. So Varejo came onto its outside and sort of, cha- sort of challenged it for the lead. And as soon as Tim Clark pressed that button, it kind of said, you know, piss off, go away, and then ran off with it. It was real dominant in the end, one by over two and a half lengths. Um, we'll say, though, Nitro and Still Night made up a massive amounts of ground um, when you look back on the replay. So, again, those two are ones to watch. They might not have won their tw- won their trials, but look at them going forward because they've got quite a bit of kick on them. And then to finish off, um, I, I, I didn't really like this one, honestly. I know Akari and Dream was the name on everyone's lips coming out of it and it's probably going to start favourite in a gym crack. But, dude, massive scampy vibes here, bro. Massive scampy vibes. Same sire, same trainer, same exact way that it trialed where it just jogged past them and didn't get ridden out but looked super impressive because he didn't need to get hit. But what happened with scampy last year, bro? Massive scampy vibes. And now that I've said that, it's probably going to win four group ones. Anyone else that you liked out of the trials or was it just that? Jeez, you're going to let me get a word in now. Jeez, that's uh, it's a long list. I don't know if all the punters um, would have loved or hated it, but good to get it out. Well done. Um, I've got nothing else to add because I didn't. I wasn't there. I didn't write down any notes. I just watched the replays. So, look, you said a lot of things, mate. You, you talked a lot about a lot of horses. Who's your top seed? Look, I'll just say I could have gone for fucking 20 minutes. Be appreciative that I tried to keep that in front of You went for 10. 10. That's what I mean. I tried to keep it five to ten instead of going for twenty. Um, <laughs> top boy, uh, like I said, I'll, I'll give a top boy and an honourable mention. Did you say? I just said, give me a top boy, top girl, and honourable yeah, mention. Okay. If you really can't split two, but um, yeah, like let's wrap it up a little bit because we're gonna get into our tips. They were all so close together. Like I said, nothing really stood out. North England's a short term. Like he's going to be in the Breeders' Plate. He's probably going to be starting favourite. Was very impressive. Does he win it? I'm not sure. Am I betting on him? But he was definitely the most impressive boy. Like I said, for a shout-out, for an honourable mention, more of a longer-term play, that Ripley just really screamed class. Uh, and then maybe Tempestuous, like I said, out of the same exact trial. And then Phillies, I've already said it on the socials. Siouf was my main one. And then maybe for an honourable mention, uh, voting rights. Again, Siouf probably the more shorter term, probably ends up in a gym crack. Voting rights, maybe not. But look for her down the line if she doesn't end up lining up. How about you? Awesome, mate. Um, look, I, I've, I've probably got to go through and look through a couple of times. I've only gone through and watched it once. I, I can't go out and, and really explain myself as of yet. So I'll leave it. Um, I'll watch a couple more. I'll watch them trial a couple more times, um, and then I'll come out. And if you guys really want to know, I'll, I'll do it. But yeah, I think the best thing will be waiting for the fields to come out, the prices to come out, and then we can go through them a bit more one by one with closer detail and compare them to their trials. Um, but other than that, mate, I think let's just get stuck into these. Oh, we've got to do hotline and listen to questions. I know. That's why I was it. saying wrap up, mate, because we've been going for 20 minutes already. So we'll get into this cracking. into this hotline, mate. So you, you rip us in and we'll get straight into it. I'm telling you, mate, I could have gone for half an hour if you let me. I, re- I reckon you just re- you were rambling a little bit there. No one knows these horses yet because they don't know the names. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, it's a good point, but I mean, you know, it's good. It's like it's all it's all noise, really, because you're like you don't really know who the fucking. Ho- There's no way to look at it, so they're all just listening to you. Yeah, anyway, all right, Stegler. What? He's coming through. What Stegler? Saturday. Oh, we'll start again. Yep. Okay. How are we going, lads? Stegler here. Um, just want to have a quick talk about Saturday. Um, and seriously how good fangirl is. I think she'll be starting a lot shorter her next one, uh, but she should definitely be winning. Um, now, we go to Friday night. We've got the fan and the Manicado. Uh, in the fan, four-horse race, you know, they're mid-distance. Um, for a group two, there's only four. What do we think about that, lads? Um, I think Pride of Jenny might just be too good for them um, and should lead all the way. Now, with the Manicado, the serious question is, I wish her win. Will it get too far back? Um, I know Cashy's got a future on it, um, but I, I, I think I it's going to be a hard one as it get too far back. Um, 
chases on at the end. Another one, I've got a good tip, uh, Stanley Express in the first. I think that horse is a serious deal. It's got a lot of upside to it, um, especially at Mooney. It should really be going close. Thanks, boys. Thank you, Stegler. All Thanks. right. So, Thanks, Stegler. Fee and stakes, four horse race. What do you think about it? We've got a few questions about this, so it's good to get it out of the way. Yeah, we'll get it out of the way. I think, uh, look, I like, I like, I always like Jenny at, at Mooney Valley. It's a short straight. If you lead, it, it makes you two or three lengths out in front more than any other track, I'd say. So um, I think she'll be tough to beat if she really gets up there. Bright side needs to stalk her as much as she can. Um, but yeah, I think I think Pride of Jenny, this is her race to really get the four horse race in the end. She's gonna have not many, not many things. If she misses the jump, she's not gonna take not gonna take that much out of her to get right back to the front because she's not running through people. Mm. So I think it's it's her race to lose. Um I think she'll win it, to be honest. But yeah, that's just me. With the with the short, short straight, I think it, it really makes a difference. Couldn't agree more, mate. So we'll go to Shower Bets. He's back. Shower bets. Hey, boys. Oh, shower back bets. in the shower. Yeah. Got quite a few bets. Okay, I'm going to start off with the Friday night. I like Dawn Service. I think it pierces in. And I extremely like BA in the group one. I mean, it's first up. Record is amazing. Three from three. I'm, I just like to have a bit of money on it at 9.50. Grinzinger Bell as well. Just think gets the job done. Pierces in. Bodyguard on Saturday. I just love this horse. Just always if I could maybe won't win first half, but I love it. Broad siding, I think it gets the job done as well. And then lastly, Mary Mount Bull up. Boys, I know it's a lot of tips, but it's over a Friday and Sunday. I've never been so fucking, excuse my language, confident at a pair of tips. It's up until this point, it's been shit. But just trust me on this, boys. I'm, I'm in for a big one today. I'm in for a big one Friday and Sunday, my bad. All right, boys, stay well. Shower bets out. You. All right, thank Huge. you. Shower bets. That could be the shortest shower bets we've had. Usually he gets on there for a couple of minutes. Well done, mate. I like them. He's a weekly segment for us now, shower bets. Yeah, I like that. All right, Jack Pilkington to finish us off. Hey, guys, Pilko here again. Hope you're tipping up Alabama State for this weekend. He's drawn a barrier this time. No way Craig Williams on. Can't go wrong. I think he'll go well. I see they've put him up favourite. I'm doing a jaunty name game again this week. We're going with Macarena and I'm a dirty rascal again because they both just missed out on a place last time. And we're throwing in good banter because that's what we're here for. And also Craig down in Melbourne. I'm hoping Craig is going to be winning in two states this weekend. One's a jockey and one is a horse. The jockey's hopefully going to be winning on Alabama State. So that'll be my lucky 15 jaunty name game for this weekend lovely stuff thank Thanks, you Pilko. Pilko. and i definitely will be tipping alabama state a bit of a uh, spoiler for the midway there all right mate listen to questions i'll take you straight to it mate let me get it up um here we go first one is from oh my god get it up first one Hey, Nico, are you going to Mooney Valley, mate? It would be a real shame if you're not going. That's my brother. Thank you, Nathan. <laughs> um, Lockie Howard, when do Bella and Giga Kick go around again? Surely they go again before the Everest. What do you reckon? Um, I believe Giga Kick's headed to the premiere next week on Epsom Day. Uh, also, think about it's going to run first up in that race as well. I've talked to the people at Proven Thoroughbreds. Uh, and they're confident that it can potentially bounce back and get its way into an Everest. Now it's back to the sprints. But uh, I would assume if you're going to see him before Everest Day, that's the day you're going to see him. Um, Lock Wilding, forfeit should have been one of you gets gelded instead of Maccas. That's, <laughs> that's great. I love that. I actually love that. Um, Riley Cooper, what are your thoughts on the four-horse race? We just spoke about it. Um, Cody Maggs. All right, this guy's asked this question three, three weeks in a row and I haven't read it out, so I'll make sure I do read it. Um, hey, gents, what do you think of NCAP and where does he go next? Um, I think it's definitely a forgotten about horse, I think. I think he's um, – NCAP's done really well. I think almost – I don't know where they're going to go next start um, with NCAP. But I, mean, like, I don't know if he goes to an Epsom or if he goes to – I think he could win the next race depending on – it It depends his, his field, but I, I do like the horse and it's always – 
I always like to tip. I, I haven't tipped it in a while, but I do like to tip it if I do think that the horse is in the right race. Um, what do you, you got? Anything to add with that? Yeah, like, like he's a good horse. Um, he often finds himself in situations where I agree he, he is forgotten. Like we didn't back him on the day where he came out and won that Theo Marks because we completely forgot about him. Um, I think luckily we did uh, cover him in the quaddy though. But I mean, he's he he's, he should be in an Epsom. I'm pretty sure the Theo Marks gets you into an Epsom. So if they want to, they can take him. Whether or not they take him remains to be seen. Do I think that he'll be competitive in an Epsom? He'll be a lightweight, that's for sure. That'll probably be the only reason that he potentially gets up because he'll be outclassed, I think, talent-wise, but weight-wise brings him right back into it because you obviously usually see those low weights uh, win as we did see last year as well. Um, Goats7545 ask, can we get a cheeky quaddy for Mooney Friday or a multi? Um, I'll send through some stuff. Um, I'll, I'll probably post some stuff up tomorrow. I've got a bit of time under my belt before I check in to my hotel tomorrow, so I'll, I'll be doing some stuff. And then I've uh, got a couple more. If you could have your own silks, what color pattern would you like the best? Well, it had to be black, gold, and white or black and gold. Uh, that was the whole reason we are black and gold and white is because when we originally started, I was inspired by Probabile, Behemoth, and It's Me, my three favorite horses. Well, three of my four favorite horses were very elegant. So it would have to be those colors. I don't know about patterns, though. What do you reckon pattern wise would we do? Oh, I, I, I'd, like, I'd like stripes. I like nature strips stripes honestly. oh yeah yeah some yeah, black and gold stripes yeah, yeah I so like that. We'll, we'll go with that um favorite netball position from 40 um big center guy <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. big wing defense guy i played wing defense in the uh the teachers v student game the other day is that the one you lost the uh, oh i was blowing i was absolutely no, no, is blowing. that the bibby loss oh funny um, hypoth- last one hypothetical if you own a group one winning elite racehorse what would it be called Great question. That is a great question. No, that's why I depends wasn't going to read pa- it. But depends who the parents would be, because I'm a big name it after your parents guy. Um, Hopefully, um, I, I mean, it, ideal is if we could name it something to do with the mock. So, um, like one of, one of our horses down here is called is it is it October Stars? The potentially it's still to be named, but that's one of the names being thrown. No, October Stars the mum, isn't it? And so October was um, just the the, the Muller. Uh, so we, Kirk, we course, wanted to call dad. it Mocktober. So something that kind of goes with with the mock. So um, that's just an example. So it depends on where, where it's um, mum and dad's names come from. But if we can get the mock into that, I think that's what. Yeah, that's a name sit. that's been floated. But again, there's a, a bunch of others that are October themed, or like Kirk themed. Um, but I'm not talking about this. I'm just talking about the question in general. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, on that though, of course, racing with Monarch. If you still want to race with us. Uh, there is actually 9% left in our girl, the uh, Tassort and Voluta filly. Of course, if you don't know who Tassort is, Manal's mum, Amina's mum, also was the mum, mu- um, dad, sorry. Uh, Manal's dad and Amina's dad and the dad to a few actual really good uh, trialers at the two-year-old trials. So if you're interested in potentially owning the next Group 1 star, fingers crossed, knock on wood, and race with us, you'll be in an owner syndicate with us. We're going to be covering its whole careers. You've still got 9% left in our girl. Our boy is completely sold out, but our girl is still available. So head to Monarch Racing's or, website. Or just send us a message. True. Send us a message and we'll, and we'll point you in the right direction. So if you want to own a horse with us, we've um, I know a couple of my mates have bought him with us, so it'll be awesome. So if you want to get involved, just send us a DM or send me a DM, whatever you want to do. Just send us a message and um, we'll get through to you. All, All right. right. Tip time? Yeah. All right, so look, track's good for at the moment, punters, when it comes to Rose Hill, but it's raining currently in Sydney. It's meant to rain for the next two days. Up to 40 mils uh, is predicted. So I would think that if that does come down, we'd be looking towards the t- uh, back end of a soft, maybe early end of a heavy. It all depends how much comes down. If It's literally the BOM says 10 mils to 45 mils. 45 mils, we're getting back end soft, early heavies. Those 10s, we're probably going to, escape with a soft five, maybe even a good four if the sun comes out on Saturday. So I would suggest back the horses who are versatile early or if you're, you know, punting on the day, wait to see what the weather's doing. But here we've both sort of looked at horses that are versatile for all sort of conditions. Um, Rail's also in the true position. So all horses should get its chance unless the track's an absolute slop fest. That's when you start to look at, you know, 
the leaders because you often struggle to make up ground. Race one, 1,300 metre midway. I'll be straight to the point here. Pilko already mentioned it in his uh, hotline. Alabama State, low weight. Craig on, up and distance, good barrier. Tick, 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 tick. I think only thing that would potentially beat him is if the track is a sop fest. So four dollars sixty, Alabama State for me. I'll take Iron Man. Just go something different. I do think um, Alabama State will be all right, and uh, I think Pilko's pretty pretty happy with it with the low weight and the and the good barrier. So I might have my own play there, but just to tip something different, I'll go Iron Man. Barrier is a worry. I know that, but um, because a three kilo claim with the with the jockey goes down to fifty seven and a half, but settles in a good spot can get there. Thirteen dollars is the price that I can I can take it for. So. Iron Man, if not Alabama State, is something that you can definitely go with. Race two, 1500 meters highway. Stay away from this one, definitely. Um, let's stay with the same colors. Go Hulu, another outside barrier, but I'm going to stick with it. $11, $3.40, um, but can get it done on the wet tracks and can get it done on the good track as well. So versatile. The only thing worse than a stacked highway is a stacked highway on potentially a wrecked track which we could potentially get here. Uh, but I'm going to go with the $17 chance in straight fire. I've seen a lot worse $17 chances when you actually look through its form and its stats. Only missed the placings once in its career, or may sorry, twice in its career. Uh, most of her form is on wet tracks as well. So that's a big tick if we do get wet, but she can do both. $17 to win, $4.20 to place. Zach Lloyd also in some quite good form riding-wise, so hopefully he can get that home for us. Uh, race 3, 2,400 metre, Group 3, Toyota forklifts. Quality, interesting... Race here, man. This is one of the better races of the day, I reckon. I, I do like this race. Um, yeah, I'll let you you go through it. Is your race to go through? Well, it's when I say it's interesting. You just you you look at the weights. A lot of these horses have been running against each other in the last month or so, and they've all been at tipsy topsy weights. Okay, but now apart from changing of the guard at fifty eight kilos, they all match up at fifty four kilos each. So, for instance. Matchusalem, I don't know how to say it. Matchusalem, I'm just going to go with that. And Campadino uh, came up against each other last start. I tipped Campadino, but it came, went out to a nice lead, got ran down by Matchusalem. Matchusalem was carrying like four more kilos on that day, and so now they come back to equal. So you would think that Matchusalem gets a massive edge there, but the reason I'm staying with Campadino in this one is because Campadino, wet, tick. Matchusalem hates it absolutely hates it. So I'm banking for the rain to come down here and for Match Salem to really, you know, get out in price because it's absolutely dominating Rose Hill at the moment. It's gone, you know, bang, bang in the last two here, 2,000 metres, 2,400 metres. Both have been on bone dry decks. But if you go through her wet stats, she's got one start at heavy, didn't place, five starts on soft, has only placed once. So Campodino, on the other hand, is much different. Two, um, Three starts in the heavy, two of them being a win. So hopefully it's seven dollars to win, two dollars ten to place. You can get out to a nice strong lead and get the job done this time. Campbell Dino for me. Yeah, I'm going to go with um with first light here. Nine dollars, two dollars forty. Tommy Berry on board. Um, you took the words out of my mouth. I I say Methuselah. It's probably not the way you say it. Um, but you're right. Methuselah just doesn't like the wet. If it was dry, it'd be my winner. First light, I like it. Nine dollars, two dollars forty. Can get it done in the wet. Tommy Berry is um is due for a, a good couple of wins as well. So we move to race number four, 1900, benchmark 88. Uh, I'm going to be pretty straight to the point here. Mayor of Mount Buller tipped it first up, came third, didn't do too wrong. I think it was a decent price as well. Um, comes in at $6.50, $2.25. 10th barrier is a bit of a worry, not too bad to be honest. But look, can't complain. Tommy Berry for another one here. I'm going to go for him hopefully two in a row. Yeah, look, I'm a big Midatsu guy. Um, he will definitely get a start. He's emergency at the moment, but there will be scratchings. Even if it's not wet, there will be scratchings. He'll get a start. Um, but I just don't think he'll relish the conditions as much as the stable mate and much more inform unusual legacy, even if it is dry. I think that unusual legacy is just that purple patch of a form that you need to back him until he fails. He's just looked super classy, rising through the grades. Every time he steps up in grade, he just continues to just get the job done. Some people are saying Metropolitan next week off the week back up. Does he go there? We'll see that next week. But I think he's just class personified, gets the job done here, $3.20. It's one of my more uh, confident bets of the day, I think. No matter what conditions gets thrown up here because he can do dry, he can do wet, and should probably you know sit off the back of them and just come on late. $3.20, unusual legacy for me. As we move into race five, the 1,100-meter listed heritage stakes, 
Just want to throw it out there. Osmosis won this race last year, and we'll leave it at that. Um, I'm with Gatsby's. Uh, I thought he was a Group 1 winner this spring. He's on my board as a potential Group 1 winner. Turns out maybe he's just a listed horse or a Group 2 or 3 because he didn't end up getting a start in the Golden Rose. So that's my first uh, futures bet down the sinker. Um, but I, I believe it was pre so we should get that money back. Um, yeah, but I think he's better than this field. The only horse that really worries me is a bodyguard. Tommy Berry did speak to us, or spoke to me, sorry, at the trials um, earlier this week, and he seemed fairly confident in it. He was one of the ones that he did want to point out that he was keen to ride. Um, but, I mean, Gatsby's also loves the wet, I think, $2.25. I'm happy to take him. Yeah, I'll I'll take bodyguard, so $4.20 for me. Uh, move to race number six here. Hardest race of the day, I reckon. Four ten hundred benchmark eighty eight. My so. favorites listed at six dollars. Um, yeah, it's it's another one of those ones where I'm going to go for a wide barrier for a horse that if I reckon pulled a bit better probably comes into the favorite is Tavi Time eleven dollars three dollars sixty first up record two from four um, can get it done in the wet um, has had five starts on the soft track three wins one in the second place so uh, it's going to be Tavi Time for me if it can settle in a good spot. Um, can get it done. But yeah, very, very tough race in this one. Look, I will say when it comes to those barriers, obviously you need to look at it on face value. Wide, wide barriers, you know, not as good. But with the potential of a lot of scratchings, it could, you know, not end up adding 17. It could definitely end up in a 14, 13, 12, which is a lot uh, easier to get done. Especially with the rain. A, yeah. a lot of them will get scratched. Yeah. So more so this week than others. If that rain does come down, expect a lot of scratchings, guys. So usually, you know, 17, 18, 19, 20 at Rose Hill is a no-go zone, but that could very much so end up being a lot shorter in. Um, Konasana here for me, swimmer that loves the distance. So tick and tick if that rain does come down. Um, usually does like deeper into a prep, but has one fresh, so that's a good sign. Tim Clark likes to get likely gets her right behind the, the leading pair and then hopefully pounces on them late. $11 to win, $3.60. It's a price I'm absolutely loving. I'll take that now because she'll definitely come in on race day, especially if the rain comes down. Um, if it's dry, probably wouldn't touch this race. I'm only really keen to bet if it's wet here uh, and it's because it's probably one of the only horses on the day that I've gone purely with the hope uh, that it is wet. Most of the other horses I've taken can do dry and wet. This is purely a swimmer bet for me. Um, as we move to race seven, the 1,400-meter group two golden pendant. Um, wasn't this a race that was completely different today compared to the other few days uh, because a couple of horses were meant to come here and then haven't. One being Jolly Star. She's now headed off to an Everest. Um, she's locked in, as is Steffi Magnetica. Um, so those two have been locked in the last well couple deserved. of days. Uh, yeah, very much so well-deserved. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see another couple snapped up in the next couple of days, especially a Manicato winner if that isn't uh, an I wish I win who's already locked in. Um, look... Amelia's Jewel. I'm not touching her. I never really get around her apart from that one time and she burnt me. But then also the fact that Tommy Berry literally said, not loving this rain that's forecasted. Um, could still get up. She's the class horse of the field. Uh, she should be beating this crew. She really should be. Only thing that's probably going to beat it is if that rain does play a factor. But I see a horse here, Samana or Semina. She can do it all. Good, soft, heavy. Especially if it does get heavy, she's an out and out swimmer. But I mean, not only is she a mudlark, not only can she get it done on the dry, she came fourth in her wing stakes last start. So how in the world is she not like the better of the day, in my opinion? I'm very, very confident in her. She's come just over a length off of Zugotcha versus Dina and Fangirl. Come on, what am I missing here? Samana, surely she just gets the job done. Yeah, I'm with you there. I think if it was dry, I go Amelia's Jewel. So watch this space. If it gets to a good four in a very, very unlikely, I'll, I'll move to Amelia's Jewel. Anything worse than that, Samana, I think it's it's a good it's a good bet. It's one to have. Um, skip the eighth, obviously, for the Golden Rose as we move to the ninth, mate. Take us there. Yeah, the Shannon Stakes here. Very interesting race. It's stacked with talent. Very, very stacked field. Again, these are horses probably with their last sort of chance to make a statement for an Epsom to try and get up in the ballot of order next for next week. Um, Celestial Legend's your favorite. Oh, I hate to be on yet another favorite on a day where there could be a lot of value, but surely he just bounces back here. I think the only thing that's going to do him in is the fact that he's carrying a lot more weight than he's used to, but he deserves to be carrying that much weight because he's that much better than them. Um, he 
you know, first run was fair. It was a pass mark, but it was nothing to scream about. But he usually likes to take a run. He usually likes to get up to these more um, these distances more. Uh, he'll also be fitter for that run. Um, he'll probably give them a start here, but he can run over the top of them. Wet's no issue. Like I said, the weight's the only thing that's going to weigh him down. He's four dollars eighty. Happy to take him. Celestial Legend. Taking Ozapenko here. J Mac hops back on Ozapenko. Um, it's another Waller kind of. First up syndrome. If God, get, we went through an Osipenko phase there for a while. Yeah, we did. Um, I think comes back to the second up will help. Does its best work second up. Um, probably don't hate it at this distance as well. I thought did all right at the 1300, but was probably just screaming for it a little bit more. 1500 looks all right. Osipenko for me. Uh, we'll move to the last 1100 benchmark 78. Another interesting race to um, leave it at. Um, I'm going value again. I've gone value pretty much all day. I'm going to stick with a bit of value here. $20, $4, $33 for a place. She's an A-lister. Fifth ba- barrier. Um, Molly Burke takes two kilos off her 63 kilo, which is fucking a lot. So it brings it deck down to 61. Um, but can swim. It's all that matters. Can swim. If it gets wet, if it gets the track gets torn up, which it can because of the, the wet and it being the last race of the day, could be an absolute slop. She's an A-lister, $20. Price I can have, and it's definitely going to be in the quarter. Yeah, it's big. It's very big. Um, a Ferrari just looks too good in this one. Hasn't put a foot wrong all career. Favorite deserves day. to get a, you know, de- deserves to get a crack at Sydney Racing, but will potentially be running Friday night at the Valley as well. Uh, if it does scratch, my tip becomes Martini Mama. Um, failed first up, but I think just takes fitness from it. Um, and you know that's at thirteen dollars, so I'll happily take that. And definitely going to uh, cover that in the quaddy as well. Usually be a, on a dollar magic here, but it's all the way out in that barrier. And like I said, only entertaining that if the scratchings bring it in. Um, but yeah, that concludes the Rose Hill rundown. The tip off, mate. I closed in on you by three points. A plus A du Carousel, very underwhelming. There. Very, very. Uh, but Fangirl, how good was Fangirl last week? We failed to mention it at the top of the show, but gee, she was good. She's always a good. She's a good horse. Um, yeah. I know you love her, like you love some horses. So. Well, I'm not shaving my head anymore, mate. It's staying on. Yeah, I saw that video. Yeah, a lot of people gave me shit for it, but piss off. Winners win. Uh, I don't care what price <laughs> it's at. Um, so we head now to, we'll start Mooney Valley. Race eight on the night, seven. Friday night. Race seven, sorry. Uh, 1,200 metres, the group one Manicato Stakes. Winner likely... Gets a slot in the Everest, like I said. You'd think, unless it's I wish I win. Um, or they'll definitely at least be in the conversation. If not getting a slot, they'll be in the conversation. Yeah, growing your pie is your favorite, $4.80. Which Has, shocks me. Oh, it doesn't. It's won pretty convincingly, done well. Um, yeah. But how is that a favorite against, like, uh, again, I'm not saying that it's not going to win because, like, it's a very good horse. Who would you it's put above winning, it? But, like, it's running against an. I wish I win. It's running against V8. It's running against... I wish I win. First up came fifth. Didn't really look great. And also has pulled the 12th barrier out as well. That's why it hasn't started shorter. Yeah, but... Hey, Asugi, maybe you could have put it in favorite. Didn't win again. Um, Does better work first up by the looks of her career so far? I don't know. I'm just saying against all these horses who are group one winners and group one talents... The fact that, uh, you know, yeah, but that, that's him. not the, always the way you got to put it. It's had five starts, it's won four. It's it, it just because it hasn't won a group one doesn't mean you can't start as a favorite, it hasn't raced in a group one. Yeah, it's a good point. I was just, I was surprised. I'm, I'm was not surprised it started that. I, I just, I don't know if I can be with it. It's a, it's a, it's a good horse, it's won really well. I like Hayasugi. I, I, I had a personal bet on, on her last start. I like the bottom weight. But um, I think I'm going to go Growing Empire. I've, I've, I've really, yeah. I think I'm going to. I, I've tipped it. I've tipped it the last last two weeks, and it's one for me. Um, it comes up, but it's a good horse, and horses winners yeah, win. Winners win. Um, I'm going to stick with it. You you got to think that it's going to be in an Everest. No Four dollars eighty is no fav is no favorite. So like, it's it's good enough for me to go look. It could even get out to five, six dollars because people like you disagree that it should be favourite. So, I'm I'm banking on it. It's um it's a low weight as well. It's only fifty two kilos. Craig Williams can ride in big races really well. Can also stuff them up, but he can ride well in big races. Um, 
Seventh barrier is ideal. Growing empire. Hey, Sugi, I do like though. Yeah, look, it's 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 fair enough. Like, again, I'm not saying it can't win. It's a definite winning chance. I was just really surprised that in a race that has, I wish I win. It's starting as a favorite. Like, I, I saw someone on Twitter say it was like, uh, you know, the year seven rocking up to the first day of high school. Like, and seeing all the year 12s walking around and going, holy shit, look at them. Yeah, um, but like this year seven's like really good at football though. That's so true. He's this like year, the jet. This year seven is like trying out for the Opens team and everyone's like, what the fuck's this guy doing? But then he actually makes a team. That's a great point, actually. That's a really good point. I, I, he should be in an Everest. You're thinking it's either going to be him or Chainlani or Kamochi here that's going to end up in an Everest in the Yulong spot. He'll, Surely he'll it's a growing up. empire. Um, but yeah, it's a stack, stack field. I think I wish I win. Uh, we get a payout for that anyways, considering you have the futures bet on it at $3.50 compared to a $5, but still a payout to pay out. Um, I think I don't think he gets too far back. He'll be in the finish. Whether or not he gets his nose in front remains to be seen. Um, I'm glad you jumped off Hayasugi because I'm going to take her. Um, we said last time um, with the, the horse we were both on, Gat Vibes, it, 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 with Lady of Camelot, it's Gat Vibes again with Hayasugi. Jamie Carr on this time. It's pure Gat Vibes. You're there dancing on tables when Cool and Gatta gets up on this night. Um, the night before the grand final with a 50 kilo. But um, I won't be on it. So it might be I know you won't be on it, but it's so gap. And vibes, I won't, bro. I, it's got to be different because Kool and Gatta won two years ago, but Swans lost the grand final. So it's going to be a different different trip this time. That's a good point. But yeah, she just was flew. Absolutely flew. Yeah, she home. came out of nowhere. She, was, she would have won an extra 50 meters, that's for sure. But um, yeah, look, fair enough. Yeah, we'll, mo- so- we'll move to the Golden Rose as well. We've got to talk about that one because yeah. I do want to talk about this. It's a very good race. I, I, they, I'm, I'm annoyed that I can't watch it live. I will be at the game, so I will again, I, I, I'm you and I'm not going to be at the track, but I will be parked on a couch somewhere watching an AFL Grand Final. Last year, because it was on Epsom, I had to be at the races because Epsom's my favourite day to go to. But I was spewing that I missed the best Grand Final of all time. Not happening this year, though. Um, sorry, <laughs> go, go through the field. Broad siding, Traffic Warden, Storm Boy, a node, linebacker, Mayfair, really fearless. Oh, geez, that's a that was a that was a one of the top topper picks from um the trials last year. I'm with Storm Boy. Great price to have him at. Came third when shouldn't have come third last week. Jumps well, wins. Simple as that. Hieronymus. Needs to jump, dude. Oh, well, the, it, it, at the moment. It's 50-50 for him, and if he gets it, he wins. If he doesn't, he can still snag a place, which we saw. So it's a good point. If he leads, he wins. I'm happy. $5 is a great price. It's going to be one of my big bets. I'm going to put a, a bit of money on Stormboy. Um, that's for sure. So Okay. Wow. So you're confident, real confident. I really like Stormboy. I, honestly, I reckon he's getting crunched. Out yeah. of the 11th barrier as well, you reckon he's still going to be able to get up there on the lead? Easy. Easy. He's going to do it. But no matter what, he's going to go forward. As long as he doesn't miss that jump, he'll win. If he doesn't miss the jump, he'll he'll still f- fly home and come, I'd say, top top five. Um, if he jumps, he, he gets it, I think. If not, he'll be he'll be very close. I don't see him missing the, the top three in this race. Okay. Big call there. It's I, not that big of a call. Well, I just think out of that 11th barrier, I can't touch him. If he drew better, I would have been yet yeah, $5. Like, yeah, hello. Because I, I agree with the... 50-50 jumping because half his starts, he's jumped, half his starts, he hasn't. But, but it doesn't matter because, like, you look at a horse, right, that's getting the outside barrier, and some of them might be a midfield runner where you think, oh, they're going to have to use a little bit to get to the front here. He was, no matter what barrier he's in, he's going to the front. So he's going to use the same amount. He might use a little bit more, but he's going to use practically the same amount of petrol to get to the front from the 11th barrier because he's always going to be pushing that front. And, like... Who, who's going to contest him here, Look, really? now that I say Who's, it, who's really going to contest him? I, I I was about to say, dude, he's got a node and Mayfair um, drawn on the inside of him. But they're both, because I was like, they're waterhouses, they'll lead. But there could be some team riding here. They might not send them completely to the front so they can make sure Stormboy gets to the front there. I think Storm Stormboy... Because I, I was literally about to throw that in your face, but I stopped myself because I've just realized Ye yeah, could make sure he gets to the front by saying... Uh, let Stormboy go to the front and then you two can trail him instead of making him spend too much petrol getting up there. 
So I think I I think I think he no matter if he jumps, he wins. That's okay. what I think. If he jumps, he wins. And I, right? I just don't think you're gonna get a price for Storm Boy like this again. Fair enough. I, I, Honest, unless it lo- unless he loses badly here, you're not going to like. He's going to go back into two, three dollars, dollar, dollar eighty, dollar ninety. Uh, honestly, five bucks is massive. I'm going to have th- like, yeah, a couple hundred on it. I reckon. Damn. Jeez. Okay. Um, look, broadsiding, deserved favorite. Am I going to be with him? No. No one ever really comes first up into a race like this. Is he going to be too classy for them? Maybe. But this race is chock full of value. We've just argued about how much value there is for Stormboy at $5. Why are you taking a $2.90 horse? You know, if you want to, all the respect to you in the world. Can definitely win. Could definitely gap them maybe in the end. But no thank you for that price. I'm looking more at the value here. And I see linebacker at $6. Yes, he was an amazing last start because his cock was just swinging out in the yard. Oh, my goodness me. Um, if he was able to keep that away. I love how he did that. <laughs> if he's able to keep that away um, and he he didn't really jump last time because he was just way too frisky in the yard. But if he jumps and he's able to settle closer to them, God, you should have seen this way he rattled home last start. It was incredible. And he absolutely loves the slop as well. He is a wet tracker. So if it does get wet, he jumps better and he's a little bit calmer in the yard. I think $6 is way overs for this horse. Um, you know, he... Again, uh, like broadsiding, he's got the exact same form lines as broadsiding uh, because they ran, you know, one and two in that size back in the day. Uh, not size, sorry, the um, champagne. Um, but, yeah, like, come on, surely. $6 compared to two ninety for a horse that has very similar form lines and a very similar way of going about it. He'll also surely be fitter than him because he's got the one start under the belt. So, yeah, linebacker for me in the Golden Rose. Fair enough, mate. Um, with that, we'll move... A lot of the around the ground tips are going to be Mooney Valley, so and that's Nico's domain. He's going to be taking Mooney I'll, Valley. I'll yeah, like I said, I have got a bit of time on my sleeves tomorrow. I've got a plane ride where I can look through the form, do that kind of stuff, um, and I'll put some stuff out for everyone um, along with a quaddy. I know a couple of people will ask for the quaddy, so I'll put a quaddy out for Friday night as well. Um, so I won't tip around the ground. Is there anything you want to tip that's not from Mooney Valley or you just want to leave it and we'll post it tomorrow? Yeah, not really. I'm going to let you take it. Oh, you did well last year and the year before that as well, so I'm just going to let you take it. Fair enough. Uh, the Saturday quaddy is race seven, Amelia's Jewel, Samana, Tropical Squall, and Macarena. That is one, two, four, and six. Race number eight, we've got Broadsiding, Linebacker, Storm Boy, and a Node. That is one, three, four, five. Race nine, Celestial Legend, New Energy, Ozapenko, Bases Loaded. That's one, four, seven, eight. And race 10, uh, Fahari, Martini Mama, She's an A-lister, and Dollar Magic. That is one, five, 11, 15, $50. Gets you 19.5% and hopefully gets you a profit this week. Yeah, I know. Sure. All right, all right mate. Sure. Uh, one bet around the country. Is it Friday? Is it Saturday? But if you're having a bet this weekend... Who is it? Why? Where is it? Let's go. Best bet. Best bet of the day, hey? Um, I don't know. There's a couple that I like. Surely uh, it's Stallboy considering you're dropping so much money on him. It, look, it's only because of the price. Uh, I'll go Stallboy. Yeah, I'll go Stallboy. Best of the day. $5. Fair enough. Um, Samana in race seven. Like I said, I don't know what I'm missing here. Um, obviously, it's come a lot... Of- in a lot of price, deserves to. It was literally a length off. Fangirl versus Cena in Zugotcha last start. It can do dry. It can do wet. Samana surely just gets it done. I know Amelia's Jewel is the boom horse, but Samana's the rifle favorite here and it should be winning. Okay, so that is my best bet around the country. Fair enough, and that'll bring us to the end, I think. Um, we'll wrap it up. Yeah, we'll do a quick thank you to the sponsors. Stridal, head to Stridal.com. If you're interested in getting into racehorse ownership, you can get your next race horse for free today by inquiring with a bunch of different syndicates. Um, And then also shout out to Dabble. If you're going to be copying any of our bets on racing or the AFL grand final, make sure to head to Dabble, use code mock sports to let them know we sent you and do so responsibly and set a deposit limit. And on that note, AFL grand final, before we go, mate, 
Who's your winner? Prediction of the margin and who's your Norm Smith? Uh, Swans win, I think. Swans win by 26. I think that they'll they'll do it, I hope, very comfortably. I don't want to say anything that's going to get clipped. Um, <laughs> and I think my Norm Smith... Um, I'm going to... It's a tough one. I'm going to go Errol. I think... Um, I think they're going to spend a lot of time on Heaney. It's going to be hard for him to play well. He's he's fucking insane. He's a great player. Hey, uh, Errol. Errol's going to be good. I think he'll be he'll be up there. Um, yeah, I'm going to go Swans by 19 in the Chad to bring home the norm. Um, because he's built for the big time, isn't he? He just pops up out of nowhere and just has those big quarters. Just remember that 2022 Grand Final when Swans were fucking terrible and he played. One of the great games. He's just one of those players where he'll go missing for a quarter and then for the next two quarters, he'll just be everywhere. Yeah. And I think the uh, the people that do the votes will pay attention to that because they want to look at those big-time players that are making the most impact. So while he might have a couple quarters where he only gets two to three touches, he'll pop up and have like 10 and two goals in a single quarter and completely shift some momentum. So Chad to take home. I also norm. think James Jordan has a legacy game. He's going to have a mass, massive game on Lockie Because he gets on the ground. Massive game on Lockie Neal. All right. Anyway, leave it at that. Good luck this weekend. We've got a lot going on. Um, look at our socials. A lot coming out. Um, any questions, send us a message. If you want to get involved with the horses, um, send us a DM. We'll get you involved. Other than that, gamble responsibly is always set a deposit limit, all that kind of stuff. Um, thanks to everyone. Thanks for listening. Grow the Swannies. Let's go. And back behind those horses, I am unstoppable. Osmosis at the clock tower, led by a link to Shinzo, Arkansas kid. And I am unstoppable is running on the leader, Osmosis, with 50 metres to go. Osmosis is clear and will take it out.